Ladies and gentlemen. Roll the camera. Okay. 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 Kia Welcome to Room 2 News. I'm Lauren. And I'm Luke. Today, in today's story, a new crime wave is sweeping the country in the in the form of the wooden graffiti. Scientists have invented an invisibility cloak. Will we help them find it? And the latest in the weather around the country, but a first story that will turn your your world upside down. If you think the world is getting more and more topsy-turvy, it turns out you're right. Builders in Germany have built an upside-down house, and before you think they may have read the plans upside down, they did it on purpose. The wacky abode was built as a tourist attraction, as well as being a comment on the state of the world, the house is 23 feet tall and rests on its roof and has steel beams in the attic. Inside the house there are beds screwed into the ceiling, upside down wardrobes, an upside down kitchen and even an up turned bathroom, though it's not known if anyone has tried to have a bath in it or go to the toilet. Normally a house like this would take three weeks to build. This one took over four months because the workers kept getting confused about the strange angles of the walls. Many tourists visiting the house complain of feeling sick and dizzy after just a few minutes inside. We now cross over to our reporter Sam, who is outside the house. How are you feeling, Sam? Thanks, Luke. I'm here with the owner of this house, Bentley, and I'm feeling great. So what made you decide to build this upside down house? So I can attract ladies to get lots of girlfriends. What comment do you feel the house makes about the state of the world? Well, an upside down house is very funny to attract people to take pictures to show online. What are some of the challenges of living in a house where everything's upside down? Well, I'll get a mucky face. Why did you build a house upside down? Cause that, so I can attract ladies to get lots of girlfriends. I told you that this morning. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Samuel Evans for two, Room 2 News. Back to you, Luke and Lauren in the studio. Thanks, Sam. Even watching that makes me feel great. And now for a story that is truly out of sight. Look out, Harry Potter. The world uh, of science is catching up to the world of m magic. Scientists in Europe, in Europe have created a 3D invisibility cloak. Watch can hide objects by blending light waves. It has been found that the that light can be controlled using the tiny crystals that makes objects disappear. So far scientists have made small objects such as coins disappear but hope it that it won't be long before they, before they, they are hiding cars, planes, and even people.
people have always dreamed of making themselves invisible. One top science scientist says that the possibilities are endless and we are very excited. However, scientists, science inventing the invisibility cloak, the science, the scientists have been having trouble finding it. As soon we, as we put down somewhere, it just disappears and invade an invader of the cloak said the inventor of the cloak said it appears that they are having trouble of finding other things too like their lunch maybe they they think maybe maybe underneath the cloak what will this invention actually be used for? Hoping to see through the reasons behind the invisibility cloak. Here is our, our on a spot reporter, Greta, with more on this story. Hello, I'm Greta, and with me is Blake and Caleb, the scientists behind the invisibility cloak. Hi Blake and Caleb, and thanks for joining us today. What made you want to invent an invisibility cloak? So we can steal all our teachers' stuff. Cool. Can you show me how the invisibility cloak works? will be used for? Um, hide and go seek. Cool. Will you make more of them and sell them? No. Well, that makes things very clear. Thanks for joining us. Back to you, Luke, in the studio. Thanks, Greta. And now, how's this for an interesting yarn? A new wave of Graffiti crime is covering the country thanks to an underground gang known as the Midnight Knitters. These wool waving criminals are covering tree branches and lamp posts with small jerseys and scarves under the cover of darkness. Police say the knitted activities of the gang are illegal because their woolly crimes are being done on public property without permission. The, po the popularity of woolen graffiti is growing and more and more public objects are being wrapped up every night. But the problem is growing, police say, and warn that if the Midnight knitters aren't caught soon. Every tree, lamppost and traffic light in the country will be warmly dressed against the cold. The problem is spinning out of control. There are a close-knit group of dyed in the wool criminals. We are st stitching together a case, but it's not seamless. There is no real pattern to the crimes a police spokesman said today. So far, the criminal knitters have escaped arrest and continue to pull the wool of the eyes of both the public and the police. We go now to a secret location with a... In investigative reporter Ollie who has an exclusive interview with one of the Midnight Knitters gang. Thanks Lauren and Luke. I'm Ollie and joining me in this top secret location is a member of the Midnight Knitters gang. 
Hello, Chloe and State, um, and Charlie, and thanks for joining us. What led you into the dark underworld of the knitted graffiti? Because we like knitting. Do you see yourself as a criminal? No. Apart from trees, lampposts and traffic lights, what else would you like to graffiti with your woolens. Plants and flowers. What's your favourite colour to knit with? Blue. Thanks for your time, Charlie and Chloe, of the Midnight Knitters Gang. We now go over to Genevieve and Stacey with the weather update. Let's have a look at tomorrow's weather. Starting in the far north in K Tyre, look out for some pretty flash flooding and raindrops as big as your head. If you're going outside, wear a hat. In Auckland there will be a mix of fair conductions and unfair condi tons, but those are the conductions and you'll just have to accept them. There will be no weather at all for the Bay of Plenty. It's talking a sh- taking a short holiday, but it is expected to be back for the weekend. In Napier and Hastings, the weather will sometimes be changeable and sometimes not. We have really no idea what will happen there. In Tangaraki, in Tangaraki, a mild depression brings with it a very dull day with no highlights at all. It will be uh, overcast and gloomy all morning, but things should cheer up by the evening, so don't worry, everything will be fine. Wellington has will have n- another capital day. There will be no wind at all, and the day conductions will be so pleasant, they'll actually be extreme. In the top of South Island... Kiowa can expect to have a good day, meeting friends for lunch, going for a swim and reading the newspaper. But try and stay indoors as the weather will be just terrible. A real mix for Christchurch, which will have some unreasonable rainfalls and some uh, sensible wind, motoring thunderstorms and some very angry snow. And in the in lower, ha- lower south, Dunedin will be frosty, cold and unfriendly until late mornings when the sun will pop over for a visit. Everybody likes the sun. That's all for me, for my mate, if it's raining outside. That's all for you. That's the news this with Logan Will. Genevieve and Stacey. Well, that's all we have time for. We hope you've enjoyed this evening's broadcast. Thank you for all watching and well, and we'll see you again next time. Until oh. until then, I'm Lauren. And I'm Luke. We're, um, for Room 2 News. Goodbye. Anora. Ladies and gentlemen. Roll the camera. Okay. Okay. Okay.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we are featuring an interview with a very peculiar looking gentleman. Scene one, take one. Take two, two. 